Okay, so let's look at question number six, where we have to calculate the total amount that the investment is worth if you invested $3,000 at 2.6% compounded quarterly for four years. Okay, so the key word here is compounded, okay, which is, makes this different than the previous questions because you can't use, in this case, the simple interest formula. So what we need to be able to do here is make sure that we understand what the compound interest formula is. Okay, the compound interest formula okay, is equal to the amount of the investment, total amount of the investment is equal to the principal you invest times, okay, and then it's this fairly complicated expression where we have one plus the interest rate divided by n, okay, and we'll go over what that is, all raised to the power of n times t. Okay, so in this case here, we know P is equal to the principal. Okay, that's the amount that you invest. So that is the $3,000 in this case here. Okay, we know the interest rate is given as 2.6%. Okay, so again, we can't use that as a number. We have to convert that to a decimal, so it's 0 0.026. Now, it says you're compounded quarterly for four years. Okay, so first of all, we know what four years is. Four years is just equal to, to time. Okay, and you notice that it is given to you in years. But this compounded quarterly value is what the variable n stands for. Okay, so n is referring to the number of compounding periods in a year. Okay, so sometimes you compound this, uh, these investments daily, um, which means you'd compound it 365 days. Quarterly means that we're going to compound it four times a year. Okay, so the answer is four times, or the number four is what n is, but it, a quarterly means it happens four times a year. You could do it monthly, which means it happens 12 times a year, and you could do it weekly, which means it would happen 52 times in a year, okay, depending on how, how they choose to um, create the compounding formula. Okay, so these are our, the values that we have here, and then we're just going to substitute them in, and we want to calculate the total amount A, so A is equal to the total, okay? So we'll just plug this all in here. So A is equal to P, which is 3,000, okay? And then the interest rate, or the rest of this formula is one plus the interest rate, which is 0 0.026. And we have to divide that by four, and then we raise that to the N times T power. Okay, so N and T are both, just both happen to be four in this case, but we're gonna raise it to the four times four power. So that's gonna end up being 16 there. So this is an equation that you really can't work them out too much in your head. You have to do this with a calculator. So we're gonna do 3000 is equal to, um, well, if we divide this by four and we sum this together, it's gonna give you 1.00. 6, 5, all to the 16th power, okay, and again, you'll need to work this through your calculator, and you're going to need a calculator where you can do um, some value to a specific exponent, so it's going to be 1.0065 to the 16th power, okay, so when we're going to multiply this through, I'm going to write down all the digits here, but you should keep, you should just try to chain this into your calculator as much as you can, so this is going to give you one point. 109222709 okay times 3000 and then this is going to give you in the end 3327 and then we can round to the nearest penny which is just to the second decimal spot okay so it's important that you keep all the digits in your calculator um, rather than write them all out just try to do this all in um, in one step on your calculator so this is the value here that gives you the total amount of the investment after four years at those particular values. Okay, and so then ask yourself, does it make sense? Okay, we're starting with $3,000. After four years, we're ending up with $3,200 or $3,300. So that, it makes sense in terms of how much money or how much value the investment's worth. Um, with that particular interest rate. Okay, it's not very high. It's not like $10,000 or $20,000. Okay, 
Okay, so this answer does make sense. Okay, so that's how I'd approach question number six.